We're completely surrounded by fire. We're taking a big uh, shot explosion. Structures on fire, and uh, we're taking refuge in our vehicle. This was not a campfire. This raging inferno was the campfire. We're bogged down at Billy and Pence. We're going to anchor here and secure the escape route. The morning of November 8th, 2018, thick smoke turned the sunny blue skies above Butte County black. There's black clouds and smoke, ash. Paradise resident Ron Carmody heeded warnings earlier in the season and had his emergency plan in place. I have a 31 foot travel trailer, had it all set up. I had four cats, a dog. So we had, I had everything set up. Ron saw that something terrible was happening on the other side of town and he knew it was headed his way fast. It was getting so smoky and sounded like a ozone because of the propane tanks. His instincts were spot on. 50 mile an hour winds drove the exploding fire from its ignition point in the Feather River Canyon through the communities of Concow and Polga, then to the east side of the town of Paradise. Four hours later, the fire had fully overtaken Paradise. Ron was in the middle of renovating his old house here on South Libby Road. So you were fixing it up. I was getting ready to. Yeah. I had all the supplies and the paint and everything in the garage. <laughs> The evacuation alert that came to a cell phone put a sudden halt to that. It was time to go. He put his dog and four cats in the RV and began his escape. He joined the thousands already clogging the only two routes out of town. You know, there's hot ashes dropping down. You know, I, just, I still got burn spots on the hood of the truck. He was terrified his truck and RV would catch fire and that he and everyone behind him would perish. So you had visions of a disaster. Yeah, if that would have happened, it would have took a whole lot more people. So it would have blocked the whole world. For evacuee survivors and those who were caught escaping, it was hell on earth. It's extremely smoky. Quite a bit of fire down here. The task of recovery began weeks before the flames were even out. Ron heard about the Cal OES solution to dealing with the charred remains of his home strewn about his lot at any one of the many community meetings held in town. It was called the Personal Property Debris Removal Program. He quickly signed up. This program removed the burden of hiring and paying for his own contractors to clean the debris left behind by the fire. How do you feel about the property debris removal process? Do you have a good experience? Was it a negative experience? Just describe to me. It was how okay. I had, I had some problems, but you know. The problems, he said, were with the soil excavation. How did that process go? Slow. But his experience wasn't all negative. What did you like about the process? This place. <laughs> this place? Ron's brand new home. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. A lot of recovery work had to happen before construction could begin. Ron's previous house was among the thousands that burned to the ground when the campfire roared through paradise. All the remnants had to go. That was too big a job for Ron, who's disabled, and certainly it was too expensive. Recovery begins with household hazardous waste removal, getting things like propane tanks, gas and oil containers, batteries, asbestos, and more collected and off the nearly 20,000 burned properties. The campfire piled on top of what Ron had gone through over the previous 11 years. He'd moved back to paradise to rebuild his life. Actually, the third time, because I was sick 14 months, just getting back on my feet, and then the campfire hit. But he would have to wait for recovery to go through his process. Debris removal is next, and it starts after the household hazardous waste mission is complete, usually a few days to several weeks. It includes everything else that's burned, things like building materials, concrete, metals, ash, and contaminated soil. Hurry up and wait, you know. The personal property debris removal program is very labor intensive. The property is cleaned down to the soil itself. The top three to six inches are removed and then tested for contaminants. 
If any are found, another layer is removed, ensuring it's clean. And once they got done, they tested the, uh, the property. They had to come back and re dig down because it didn't pass inspection. That was the source of his only real gripe about the PPDR. Ron said the waiting was the hardest part of the debris removal process. It took a lot longer than he expected, but it was the coordinated efforts within the PPDR that prepped his lot for his new home at a time when Ron likely could not have done it on his own. So until his new home could be built, he would live in his old RV. I lived in the RV for three and a half years. Sounds like that was difficult. At times. <laughs> mm -hmm. June 29th, 2022, Ron got the keys to his new home. The old proverb, it takes a village, certainly applies to paradise. Sure. What got you through it? Termination. Mm-hmm.